some all right Let's see if people hop in here just gonna talk some uh some nfl draft impact of the covid 19 pandemic that's going on currently affecting um most of the world um most majority of the united states and then um there was a report that came out from the mmqb about the Las Vegas Raiders trying to move back possibly in the draft um, with one of their first round picks to acquire more picks, specifically trying to get a pick in the second round. So we'll be getting into that. Um, first off, I want to talk about the impact of COVID-19 and the NFL draft. So let me do a share screen here, guys, one second screen um sure you guys can see my tab here so here's a let's see if this works all right here we go guys so the impact um just briefly um COVID-19 there's not any more player visits it has to be done through webcam meetings um I discussed that earlier before in another video, previous video. But um, the biggest impact, obviously, is, you know, if there's no live event in Vegas, um, like it was supposed to this year. Um, it's going to be a virtual draft, essentially. Um, but one of the most biggest impacts I would, you know, look to see is guys with medical issues possibly, you know, falling in the draft. Take Tua Tagovailoa, for example, um, several, he's had a couple ankle surgeries, um, this past year, you know, he had the hip surgery and teams can't get their doctors to see him and, uh, see the reports. They have to trust a, you know, third party. What's up JB. Nice to see you, man. Just, uh, talking impact of COVID-19 in the draft. Um, but basically, yeah. So the draft is going to be players with injury concerns are going to fall. Um, another guy, Grant Delpit, um, had a clavicle injury um, a couple years ago. And since then, it just seems like his hitting is lacking. Is that related to his clavicle? Um, Mutai from Fresno State has only played one full year um, in three years of college. You know, what's his medical is going to look like? Lewis, the pass rusher from Alabama, what's his medical is going to look like? So you're going to see players potentially fall with medical concerns. I mean, now you're hearing reports that Tua, you know, might go behind Herbert and, you know, slide even a little bit more. And that's just because you're gambling a lot. You're going to have to trust a third party, you know, a third party doctor, not your own staff. Teams cannot meet with these players, these doctors that can't bring them in for physicals. Um, so that's an impact, you know, not having it live in Vegas is a huge impact. Um, but another thing is, you know, there's not going to be no war rooms. Teams are uh, banned from, you know, with all the social gathering restrictions, the NFL sent a memo saying, you know, you cannot, even in Missouri, for example, where they don't have a stay at home shelter right now, um, you cannot group together. The, um, so there's no war rooms. It's all going to have to be virtual. What this is going to impact is trades, I believe. Um, if you look on the screen right here, just alone, uh, Last year, I believe there were six trades. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six trades in the first round. And, um, you know, that's with full technology, multiple phone lines, war room, being able to communicate to your um, staff. That's not going to be the case anymore. Um, you know, so luckily for a team like Vegas, I would say, and – you know, they have two guys that are really, you know, calling the shots, which is nice, but that's going to be a huge impact. So the, avail the availability of being able to move up and down in the draft, especially, you know, when we get later in the rounds, when there's less time on the clock, it's going to be crazy um, to see, you know, the impact or if there is going to be a lack there of impact in the draft and movement, you know, to go secure your player. Um, JB says the reason why, Grant Delpit is injured. He does everything he can to tackle, tackle. Yeah, on contact. I love Grant Delpit. I'm a big Grant Delpit fan. It kind of reminds me of Derwin James. People kind of worry about him and his step back. Um, a lot of times, you know, with those first-round players, 
Um, it's especially in the secondary. You can even see a guy like Henderson early on. He was a much better tackler, um, forcing fumbles on blitzes. As they become, you know, first round, quote unquote, locks. Um, you know, you see their tackling kind of dips. I'm not too concerned, but the injury concerned is an issue. I would say JB, um, like I said, you got to trust the third party. So looking back at it, you know, only six trades last year, you know, first one at number 10, you know, with teams struggling just to be in communication with their own staff, their own war rooms, the virtual war rooms. That is, I think there will be an impact on trades. Um, not only in the first round, but especially in the later rounds when there's less time. So I would expect less than six trades in this first round. Um, you know, six last year, I'd expect less. You know, there's going to be some issues, I would imagine, um, with the technology and whatnot, if I had to guess. So that's another impact. So that and injuries and then just not being live. Another impact is going to be, you know, what's it going to be like? What's going to be the experience of the broadcast? for the people I expect this to be probably the most viewed NFL draft considering, you know, most of the countries that stay at home, it's going to be a huge event. That's still going to be live. I just, I'm interested to see how they broadcast it. Um, moving on here, there was a, there was a report saying, Oh, I just changed my share screen. Sorry guys. Hold on a second. There's a report saying that the Raiders are looking to move down. I'm going to just bring that up for you guys. Right here, from Bleacher Report. There we go. So there was a report saying that the Raiders are looking to move down. That was from the MMQB, Albert Breer. Uh, MMQB is part of Sports Illustrated. Um, but here, the Detroit Lions, Las Vegas Raiders, and the Jaguar, Jacksonville Jaguars are among the teams reported considering a trade down in the first round. And uh, if you guys have been watching my previous videos, I've been saying this for a long time. Mike Mayock's going to want to trade down. Um, the the best way to be able to capitalize and find value in the draft is to have picks in a variety of rounds. You don't know where players are going to fall, um, whether it's because of injury or, you know, a, t a talent rich position. So receivers end up falling into the second stuff like that. Um, you want to be more balanced and that creates, you know, opportunities to move up and down the board um, marginally um, to get a player, if the more balance you have. So with the Raiders, you know, depending on how it shakes out, uh, I look for them to take a receiver at 12, uh, maybe uh, Brown, uh, Brown from Auburn, if he's available, Derek Brown. Um, but after that, I can't wait for the draft. JB says March Madness, I'm be opening day NBA playoffs. Yeah, JB, you said it best. I can't wait for some more sports. The draft's going to be awesome. Um, I honestly think they should maybe think about increasing the pick time, you know, to account for the situation that's happening, you know, with people not having a war room and doing it all virtually, you know, maybe extending each pick a little bit, you know, elongating the broadcast. You know, like I said, they're going to be making tons of money, I'd imagine, off of it. And a lot of eyes are going to be on it. I'd expect them to maybe even possibly break the record. Um, but, yeah, so thinking back, I looked for the Raiders to probably try to tack a receiver at 12, if not trade back at 12, get a lot of value. But definitely try to, you know, accumulate to, to trade back. So looking into that more or less, let's get into, you know, maybe possible prospects and or – uh, the trade value chart here. So let me bring it up here for you guys. Chrome tab. So this is not like all set in stone. Obviously, this is you know just um, loose values. So hypothetically, if you said the Raiders, you know, are trying to get back at eight seventy five, they're trying to get in the second round. Um, First of all, the key thing is you got to have a partner willing to trade up right here. So what possibly could be a team here looking to trade up? Um, you know, what teams are they trying to get in front of? Um, what position? Is it worth it? And then, you know, kind of go from there. So if I had to just kind of, you know, guess, use an educated guess here, looking at the board here, 
you know, Jacksonville, if you wanted to jump them, or Philadelphia, let's say Jacksonville doesn't go receiver first. Um, receiver needy teams to jump ahead of Jacksonville, to jump ahead of Philadelphia. Um, pass rusher, let's say Kinlaw still available at 19. There's been a report that the Raiders aren't that high. And then there's two dominant interior players, Brown and Kinlaw, in my opinion. Um, Jacksonville would be a fit for him and even maybe Philadelphia. So maybe, you know, a team trying to get up there. Um, let's say Herbert's still on the board or a love at 19. Maybe a team, maybe Jacksonville trying to jump ahead of Jacksonville for a quarterback. Um, and then just quarterback in general, obviously. Um, another thing, let's say Miami, you know, miss, uh, let's say there's an offensive tackle here. Potentially I could see that offensive tackle is a very valuable position. Jaguars could use one. Philadelphia could use some more offensive line help. Minnesota to get in front of that. So corner would be another one. Um, Philly doesn't really need one, but Jacksonville definitely does. So maybe corner, um, a team trying to get Kinlaw or a quarterback like Love or Herbert, if they're still around, um, would try to get that. Um, you saw it a couple years ago with Lamar Jackson, the team traded up you know, to the back end. Because the difference between first and second round on, and on picks is the first round you get the team option, so you get a little bit more control. So if you're going to get a developmental quarterback, you'll often see teams you know, trade up to get that. Um, so if you're going to speak on that, Let's think of, you know, maybe some teams here that might try to get up here. Let's say the New York Jets, hypothetically here, they go receiver right here, right? And then let's say they're comfortable potentially getting a Jones or Jackson or, um, God, I can't remember the name, the other offensive tackle from Georgia, not Thomas, but the other guy. Um, basically one of those three tackles, let's just say, or uh, Cleveland from uh, – from Boise State, who tore up the combine, who I'm not so high on, but a great athlete. Let's say they're trying to jump up here to get a tackle. Let's say even Miami gets one right here. So there's only two of those guys left. They're trying to get ahead in front of Jacksonville, ahead of Philadelphia to get a tackle. Um, let's take the Jets, for example. So let's see what the Jets have. Um, New York Jets. I believe they have two seconds. So let's say the Jets, you know, at 11, they went – hypothetically offensive, I mean, receiver here. They get the number one receiver off the board maybe or the number two depending on what Jacksonville. Um, and that really makes it logical here. So like I said, let's say Jacksonville goes Jerry Judy and then the New York Jets go Henry Ruggs or C.D. Lamb. Okay, well, they need a tackle. They need a tackle. Okay, Right here, folks, 19. Jacksonville's right here. Might need a tackle if they go receiver first. The Jets need to jump them to get a tackle. If the Jets get a number one receiver and number one offensive tackle, that'd be awesome. So what would it cost? You know, usually you have to give a little more, but this is just loose average, 875. So 420 plus 250, that's uh, 670, 680 plus 195. So a little short. But, you know, that would be something I would consider. You could even get something in the future, uh, future fourth, let's just say. You know, a little cherry on top, you know, so somewhere between 50 points added. That would be just about even. So, you know, that's a reasonable thing, situation that could happen. You know, receiver goes here because they are some of the best. Jacksonville right here is what I'm saying. Um, Jacksonville, let's say, and the run of tackles, so they got to jump New York Jets. So give me pick 48, 79, 68, and then a future four from the Las Vegas Raiders. And then what that does is that gives you four, three, five in the third. So you could package two of those and get in the second. So you could have one in the first, two in the second, three in the third, and then, you know, even a future four next year. Um, so that's a possibility I could say, see here. Um, let's say – Let's say it's to get a quarterback. You know, they're kind of no man's land here at pick 19. I mean, I guess Jacksonville could maybe use a quarterback, hypothetically. I don't see that as likely. But let's say someone's trying to get a quarterback. Um, let's see Indianapolis. So Indy. Yeah. This over here, folks. If you guys got some comments or uh, questions, let me know. So if you're going to think, let's say Indy trying to get a quarterback again here. 
don't have a first because they got the Buckner trade. So let's say they're all in, you know, on trying to get that quarterback of the future. They got a great roster around them. You know, they got Phillip Rivers. Um, they could look to trade uh, Bruce, uh, Jacoby Brissett um, to get some of the cop- capital back. So it's like 875 here. Boom. Two twos. About a thousand. I do that in a heartbeat if I'm the Raiders. 34 and 44. You get your quarter, excuse me, get your quarterback of the future, in Indianapolis. Or let's say there's another potential target they're looking for. Maybe it's before the run, the next run on receivers. They want to trade up and get a dominant receiver. Um, you get 34 and 44 if you're the Raiders. So first two twos, three threes, um, and then a four and a five. That'd be great di- distribution. And, guys, this is off the report from the MMQB. Albert Breer saying that the Raiders are looking to move down. If you've listened to my previous videos, it's something that I am expecting um, or have expected. The best way to capitalize on value is to have picks in a variety of spots so you can be, um, you know, catch a player that's falling or move up a little bit to secure a player you want, you know, without costing major assets to make a jump, to make a major jump. Um. So, yeah, guys, that's kind of my my thoughts, my two cents. As I said, maybe a Kinlaw right there. Um, if there's another team with a lot of capital, maybe be Jacksonville, but they don't need two picks in the – three picks in the one. Um, so, yeah, look, as I said, you know, because of the COVID-19, look for players with injury concerns to fall. Look for a creative broadcast, I'm hoping. And then look for less trades to take place, especially in the first round um, or excuse me, in the later ish rounds when the clock, you know, runs by a little faster. Let's see what JB's got a question. Do you think that the Raiders would like to think to trade up? All right, JB. I think honestly, there's maybe two players the Raiders could possibly trade up for. Um, if there is a quarterback that begins to fall that they're in love with, they will consider trading up. Um, I don't think they're willing to mortgage the future, but let's say a two attack of Valoa. Um, I don't have the draft one. Before. Let's say a two attack of Valoa. Let's say they're enamored with Tua. He begins to fall because of medical, and he's a bit. He's in a bit of a free fall. Let's just say. Let's just say somehow Tua gets to. You know, pass number six. I think the sweet spot to trade would be the Sunos for the Raiders would be about seven, um, eight, maybe nine. You heard Jacksonville's trying to get there. I think that area, that cluster, would be enough for the Raiders to move up from 12 and not have to give up the farm. So let's say a Tua somehow gets it past the Chargers due to injury concerns and all that. Um, or they go out and get a Cam Newton and they're fine with him, you know, and they're, they're excited about the next year's class and the injuries concerns. You know, 1,500, 1,200, so that's 300 points. I'm going to switch to LV here. 300 points. you got to make it worth their while. Um, anything to get up to that, um, as I've suggested in other um, videos, I think it's going to cost, you know, a 12, a 3 this year, and then like a next year's 2. So that would be about 1,200 plus 200. would be about 1,400. About be 100 short. You throw in the future 2 to make it really nice. Um, you know, Carolina's in a full rebuild. Um, so something like that, that'd be for a quarterback. And then the only other player I really can see at JB is for a guy like Isaiah Simmons. Um, you know, the Raiders love their custom players. He's a matchup piece. I remember when he ran his 40, you see Mike Mayock and Paul Gunther just smirk at each other and laugh. Um, you know, and I think it is possible he could make it to about seven. You know, a lot of quarterbacks and offensive tackles are expecting early push Chase Young and Akuda in that top end. And then, um, you know, linebackers usually tend to fall, especially weak side linebackers. Um, and, yeah, I think that – I think if, if if Isaiah Simmons made it to about seven or a guy like Tua if they were in love with, um, you, like I said, I think, you know, the 12th, one of the thirds and a future two would probably get the, the job to – Job done um, out there, JB, in, in my opinion. Um, I think JB just had another – another Raiders won't – let's see. Raiders won't trade either first. High-quality players, as our free agents did well. 
running back and DB. You know, uh, good point. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say that. You know, Mike Mayock has proven to say, you know, he wants picks in a variety of areas. Um, you can go back to last year's draft press conference. Um, they talk about, you know, having the picks in a variety of uh, areas. And then you see the, the report that I brought up earlier from the MMQB, Albert Beer, saying that they are looking to move back. And it makes sense. Um, it's a deep wide receiver class. It's one of their needs. I happen to think um, there's a lot more corners that deserve to go later in the one past pick 19, um, early round two, than at pick 19, a guy like Fulton Diggs, A.J. Terrell, um, a Gladney. I would like to see, you know, probably around, you know, pick 23 and on. Um, so, you know, getting the most value out of your picks and trusting it, I could definitely see the Raiders try to move, uh, move out. And as I mentioned, I don't know if you're here um, who mentioned that comment that I got posted, but if you look at the draft board, hypothetically, um, if they were able, as I brought up the New York Jets, if you're able to get a second from the Jets and two threes, you then have, you know, a one to take the receiver. You take your corner up here and then you package two threes and you get a two and you take another receiver or another player that's fault. And then you still have two threes, a four and a five. So it just gives you a whole lot of versatility um, out there. So I do expect the Raiders to try um, to move back from one of those first. Now, having said that, let's say, you know, they get their dream receiver at 12, so they're taking it. They get their first choice. They get their guy. They're going to stay there, obviously. And let's say at number 19 there's someone that's there that they weren't expecting, then, yes, if, if he's higher up on the board, if he's a top 19-ranked player, I could see them selecting him. But, you know, as I'm saying, you know, if you're thinking of taking a corner at 19, you know, there's Fulton and Gladney um, who I would want to take, you know, maybe five or, five or so picks a little bit later. So that's just my opinion there. Um, and there is a difference, you know, taking a player eight, six spots sooner than he should. That is a difference. You know, obviously it was magnifying even to a larger degree last year with a guy like Cleveland Farrell. Uh, but there is an impact there. Um, but you are right. There is a chance that they just stay where they are. Joseph Amanderas, my man, definitely Simmons would be worth moving up for. Yes, sir. Yeah. Me and Joseph have talked about this many of times. Um, you know, if Simmons – begins to fall, which I think is a possibility, let's say at like pick seven, you know, you'd have to entice them 1,500 points. Um, you could even do it with pick 12, hypothetically, to seven, but let's, um, you know, you're 300 points shy. So you go give them point, pick 12, you give them a third and a future two, um, or maybe even just a future third and it might get it done. And you might think, why would they do that? Well, Carolina is in full rebuild. Um, as, the, as the way it goes, they might still be able to get a Kinlaw or Brown at 12 that they'd be happy with, or maybe a Henderson at 12, um, a corner. Um, you know, so Carolina's got so many holes, but they don't need to be pigeonholed. But yes, um, to get them to move off of a guy like Isaiah Simmons, I think you'd have to overpay the 1,500 points. But yes, uh, the two players I would expect um, the Raiders to be, you know, interested in moving up for, if not, you know, position would be a quarterback they're in love for. Like a guy like Tua, if he begins to fall, let's say he gets past the charges because of the injury concerns and the COVID-19 affecting, you know, the medical reports and all that goodness. Um, or or Isaiah Simmons, who I think is the ultimate chess piece for what the Raiders are looking for. Um, but that's about it that I had planned. Keep it short and sweet, basically, for this. Um, oh, Joseph's got another comment. I was going to say before I close up, if you guys have any comments, suggestions right now um, to fire away, let's do it. Um, let me see what Joseph said here in the chat. One second, Joseph. I'm trying to read your comment before I take off. Not the possible sleeper in the wide receiver, not top five with is Pittman from USA. I watched film on him. Yes, Joseph. Michael Pittman. Now he is a big time riser. I see him as a second round lock, um, early third lock. That is for sure, Joseph. So let's say you want a Pittman if you're the Raiders. You have to trade back to really feel confident about getting him or you're going to have to package two threes to get into the second. Well, if you don't trade back in the first, that means you get the two picks in the first and then one three and then a four and a five, and that's it. Um, so, yeah, if you want a guy like Pittman, 
I think it'd be wise to try to trade back and get in that sweet spot where he's going to be selected, which would be a, you know, late one, like late, late one or, you know, two, possibly early three. And the reason why there's such a broad range is the receiver uh, de- uh, class is so deep. So really what it comes down to is, you know, our team's going to be waiting on receivers because it's so deep. So it's going to cause receivers to fall um, it's because there's so many, you know, well-talented receivers. It's very possible that you know one or two begin to slip um so that's kind of my point and that's why i think you know and dating back to last year mike mayock in his post uh draft press conference it's about manipulating being able to work the board and the easiest way to do that is to have picks in variety of ranges and not having a pick in the second round is a huge hole you know from pick 19 as you can see if they rather stay where they are from pick 19 to pick 80, that's a big long jump. There's gonna be a lot of good football players that go in this range that are falling, falling, quote unquote. Um, not just from the media's perspective, but from the Raiders' perspective and how they list the board. You better believe there's gonna be players that get drafted, you know, in this 45, 47 range that the Raiders would have been ha- comfortable at taking at like 31, 32 if they had a pick. So it's about getting to uh, a wide range and diversity of picks. Um, let's see. Imagine the Raiders kicker in the first round. Oh, JB, oh, you such a you're such a funny guy. That's a little salute to sea bass there. I see. I love it, JB, and I uh, appreciate you chiming in uh, as always. So, guys, as I touched on the key header notes, um, you know, COVID nineteen huge impact on physicals and you know teams having to rely on the tape as well as, you know, possibly limiting the number of trades and, you know, causing players to fall because of injury history. And then, you know, I'm interested to see the broadcast, um, you know, how they do it and see the ratings from it. I expect it to be, you know, probably the most highly viewed um, draft in history. Um, any other questions, guys, before I wrap it up, by the way, Pittman's not afraid to soft TVs. Oh, no, he's not, Joseph. Um, you can go watch uh, Pittman versus Utah this past year. He single-handedly uh, destroys uh, Utah and gives USC the victory. And, uh, you know, a good fun fact about him, I mentioned on previous videos, Joseph, I'm sure remembers, is his dad played for John Gruden in Baltimore, was a power running back, maybe the best, biggest, best biceps in NFL history. Uh, <laughs> he was just jacked. Um, so, yeah, guys, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Feel free to check out the video and uh, thanks for the support and uh, you know, looking forward to the draft and more uh, videos to come. Um, find me at uh, Mason Riggs on Twitter to get a hold of me. It'd probably be the easiest. It's out there at the bottom left. Thank you so much. Later.